Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to Snooty Lounge Podcast, and I got a special guest, the L Captain, Adams Torres. How you doing this morning? Doing good, brother. I appreciate you for having me this morning, man. I really thank you for coming on, but uh, I got a baseball in my hand that you signed for me during the Super Regionals. Who was your first autograph that you got? If I'm going to be honest with you, bro, I can't really remember. But I'll just tell you who my favorite player is and was, actually, and who I got is Robinson Cano. Why is it Robinson Cano? I just love the way he played, man, Dominican. He played second base, and he was just a, he was just a great leader on the field when he played with the Yankees. And he just had a lot of drip, man. He was a swaggy guy, and I just I always wanted to be like him growing up. So I think that's why I got the nickname Swag. A lot of guys call me Swag, but it's because I wanted to em emulate him. So, yeah. Man, you got a lot of swag, and Appreciate I just found that. out you were a Yankees fan yes, and sir. from Manhattan. Yeah. But yeah. I'm going to focus more on the playoff run that you guys had. I know the first game you played at Battle State, and y'all torched them, went 18-7. and seven. What was the confidence of the team after that game? It was very high, man. Um, just just knowing that we could battle and compete like that going back and doing the same thing and, and just understanding that, you know, regardless of the situation, uh, we had the experience already. So for us, a lot of the seniors, we just knew, like, just got to go out there and do our thing. And that's what we did, so. Yeah, that was a, a really, really good game, 18-7. to seven, And then y'all went and played Tampa, the number one seed, and y'all torched them and got a trip back to uh, – to Rollins, and you played Barry State the two-game series. Mm -hmm. what, what, what was the feeling of you winning the game back here with your fans watching beating Barry University? Man, there's nothing better than coming home and being able to, more or less, for lack of better words, put on a show for your fans, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, you really dream about doing it in front of your people. So uh, Rollins, I don't know how long it's been since they've done that super regional or regional hosting, something like that. But for us to have that opportunity, uh, you know, beat the number one team, Tampa at the time in the country, do it two years in a row. One time at, you know, at their place, get to do the Super Regional, and then at our place, get to do the Super Regional, to go to the World Series, is, is, you couldn't ask for anything better than that, man. Man, I want to say thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, I got to take a picture with you. I got to hold a trophy. I remember on my Instagram, I said, uh, I temporarily uh, clinched it with you guys. <laughs> But yes, um, sir, I know you guys went to Cary, North Carolina, and you had to play a couple more games. But what was the experience in Cary, North Carolina, outside of baseball? Man, it was a lot of hotel time. A lot of time on the bed, just trying to figure out what to do. Actually, the first couple of days, we had a couple of days off. So we went and visited Duke University. A couple of my boys you know that, that we had, were close on the team. Visited Duke University. That was my dream school coming out of high school. Wanted to see what that was like. And then uh, a couple other schools, uh, North Carolina. Just kind of visited universities in the area. And then just kind of see what the what the life was like out there in the city, man. Just trying to you know go to a couple minor league baseball games, the the AAA team for the Tampa Bay Rays is out there, so we went and watched them, and it's a cool experience, man. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to do out in North Carolina, beautiful state, beautiful beautiful area, so it was kind of dope. That's what's up. Uh, I was JJ Reddit fan, so I'm a Duke fan myself, yes, more sir. like back in the day. But yeah. what did you do at Duke? What specifically did y'all do at Duke University? Man, just tour, man. They got a beautiful beautiful church. They got a beautiful campus. Uh, the students there right now, uh, a lot of lot of in intellectual kids, and just got to just got to tour uh, the the sporting facilities. That was really our our main goal, man. You got to see uh, Cameron Indoor Stadium. We didn't get to go inside, right? But we got to see it from the outside. Got to see the baseball field, which you know, funny they don't really even use it very much. And compared to how nice it looks, they actually play at the minor league stadium where the Tampa Bay Rays AAA affiliate play. So it was just kind of like, wow, like they got all these facilities, all this money in the school. They don't even have to use their baseball field. So that is, it, was cool. it was cool, man. It that was is cool. so cool. Yeah. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Snoop Lounge Podcast. I got the El Capitan Adam Torres here. But let's go ahead and get into the actual bracket. The first two games, you won a combined score of 24 to 5. How did you guys do that? Man, I think, like I said before, just trusting ourselves. Uh, I know We knew that we could hit. You know, and we knew that we could pitch as well. We just had to put it all together. And like I said before, we had the experience. We had a lot of guys, a lot of seniors. And uh, I actually had an interview there that I even told the, the interviews, you know, it's all about scoring first at, at the end of the day. In postseason, you want to score first. You want to put the pressure on the other team because if you think about it, it's, it could be anybody's last game. So for us, it was just like don't, don't let them put us on the, on the wall and, you know, try to get us to go ahead and, and try to fight against ourselves. Just try to fight against, you know, the baseball at the end of the day. Don't worry about who's on the other side of the dugout and just do our thing, man. We came out there, a lot of the guys, you know, the, the seniors just put bats on the ball, hit the ball far, uh, we did our thing, man. You did, and you hit the ball far yourself against Millerville, the number one seed. What happened in the seventh inning when you went up to back? I went the whole rundown. So, man, um, 
That at bat against Millersville, uh, they had a really, really good pitching staff. I mean, top, top notch in the country. Probably the best I've seen all year. Every single one of their guys was like mid 90s, and they had crazy stuff. For that at bat, man, I know we were up already so much that I was just trying to, you know, trying to go out there and do something for my last ever couple at bats in my, right. my career. You know, I was trying to hit the ball as hard as I could every single at bat. And, uh, and that at bat, we had a run on, I think, on first or second base, and I don't remember too much. And uh, the pitcher was throwing me a couple fastballs, and I was like, dang, he's throwing pretty hard. But I was like, you know what, man, just get the bat out and do something that you can remember. Right. So for me, it was just wait on something that I could hit, man. I got a pitch on the middle inside part of the plate, and I put a barrel on it, and thankfully it went over the fence, man. So, I mean, that's all glory to God at the end of the day. I can't control what the ball does when it's in the flight, but uh, it went over the fence, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy for that. Glory to God, yes, and you did your thing at that at bat, if I could say so myself. I know Millersville was the number one seed, and I'm gonna get into the San Bernardino series that you guys had, but what was your reaction when Millersville, the number one seed, was eliminated? Kind of crazy, man. I mean, at the end of the day, you can't really talk about number one seeds and when you go to the tournament like that, because I know it's a tournament, I know it's a World Series, but everybody's good, you know what I mean? So it don't matter whether you're the number one seed or the eighth seed, like you can compete, because there's a reason why you're at the World Series. And for us, it was just kind of like, okay, cool. Like, you know, we, we kind of, you know, took it a little easy going against Cal State because we figured, we thought, we believed that they didn't have as good as pitching as, as Millersville did. And that's what kind of, you know, made us kind of lose our step going into the national championship, having to play Cal State twice. Uh, but seeing Millersville lose, it was just kind of like, holy cow, like, you know, things are going our way. Right. Because you know, at the end of the day, like, we felt like they were the better team on the other side of our bracket uh, uh, along with us. So it was just kind of like, wow, like they lost. You know, it's our time to go get this trophy now because at the end of the day, the other side of the bracket has got to do their thing and see us. So for us, it was, we had a lot of confidence. And like I said, we kind of overlooked Cal State a little bit and I kind of bit, bit us in the ass a little bit, but it is what it is. Yeah. Then you had a two-game series against a team. You played the first game you was in with San Bernardino. Yeah. The first game you guys lost uh, further on into the bracket. What was the attitude after game one? It was just kind of like, man, you know, we, we, we got to understand that we – we're in a position where we can really get ourselves to a national championship. And like I said, we started the game off kind of overlooking them a little bit. You know, they weren't as big as us size-wise. We had a lot of pitching left. You know, we were 2-0 and in the tournament. They were on their back. They had one loss. So it was just kind of like beat them once and they're gone. And for us, it was just like we went into the game a little bit too lackadaisical. Um, I feel like a lot of our guys, you know, we did our thing, but we really weren't focused is what I'm trying, I'm trying to say. Uh, not lackadaisical. And we were just, you know, we just, really just trying to put bat on balls, but things weren't working out that day. You know, that wasn't really our day, I would say. And thankfully, the next day we came out and did our thing, so. How did you guys focus? How did you find your focus after that game? You say you had to focus. I mean, brother, a lot of the times that we focus, I, I would say it's, it's more how we spend our time outside of the camaraderie that we have outside the baseball field. It's not really all just about being on the field and whatnot. Um, a lot of our guys know that regardless of what happens, we have each other's back. So, you know, it's all about baseball. It, it'll humble you very quickly. Uh, so you got to go out there, and if you have a great day, man, or if you have a bad day, just come out the next day and do your thing because at the end of the day, whatever happens, happens, man. So for us, we kind of took it with that mentality. We went into the next day, and we did our thing, man. Yeah. So the next game, you guys had to play them again, and you guys clinched the game going to the national championship. What was your immediate thought? Uh, we're going to the national championship. Job's not finished, man. Job's not finished. I think Kobe said that best. I think we had to go out there and just do our thing one more time, a couple more times actually, against a, against a good Angelo State team. And just, you know, continue to battle, continue to do what we've been doing all year is playing baseball, man. Like I said before, compete against the baseball, you won't have a problem. You compete against the other team, it'll get in your head. You start doing bad and things like that. You compete against the baseball, you can compete about nothing else but a ball. So that's how we saw it, man. And we went out there and we tried to do our best against uh, uh, Angelo State. And, you know, that first game for us was like, you, you see all the, the flag and all the fans in the stands and you're like, holy cow. Like the way they set it up, it makes you feel like you're playing in, in Major League Baseball in October, man. So. Right. It was to, to, to actually sit there and think like, damn, this could be my last baseball game or we could go into another one. But this is for sure the last day I'll ever be playing baseball is this Saturday, June, whatever. Just to kind of think about that as I'm looking at the flag, the national anthem and seeing the other team on the other side, I was just like, holy cow, like, this is a great way to end it. You know what I mean? At the end of the freaking day, whether we win a national championship or not, you know, for me, it was like I wanted to come out here with that trophy. But, you know, things didn't work out that day. But it was it was an awesome experience. I know it was for sure. What did you tell the team before the game started? Dude, I think we were just all locked in. I don't think there was too much, too much talking. We were, we were very, very uh, you know, loose and whatnot, stretching, doing the same things we do all the time, playing around, um, talking to each other. 
But uh, we were locked in, man. I think a lot of the guys were ready to go. Uh, we knew that we had to win two games that day to win a national championship. For, for us, it was just like, man, don't even talk to me right now. I'm ready to go <laughs> type stuff. So that's how it was. It was kind of dope. Yeah. So I know the game, it went five to six. You had a pretty good at bat. You went three for four that day. And the game did not go the way that you wanted to go. How did it feel when that last out was made that game? You know, we battled, um, kind of waited a little too long to do our thing. Um, but it is what it is, you know. Uh, Angelo State, like I said, they also had a very good pitching staff. Uh, and we were a little bit down in pitching at the time. So we had, to, we had to find a way and battle it out to try to figure out how we were going to come back, whether it was through offense. We knew we, we, knew we, we could out hit them. We just, you know, hit into a couple double plays. I hit into one myself the first inning and, uh, you know, got ourselves out of some innings that, you know, we should have scored some runs and really put the pressure on them. Like I said, it's whoever scores first really in the postseason is just going to win the game because it's hard to battle back when you know you got your back on the wall. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, congratulations to them. They were a great baseball team, but we did everything we could that day and, you know, didn't work out. So. I know it's been a couple of more, couple of days than since the game has been going, the game happened. What would you tell your teammates right now? It's been a couple days since the game has been over. What would you tell your teammates right now? Man, I just want to see my guys and hug them. I don't think I want to tell them anything about baseball. I don't think a lot of the seniors, man, <clears throat> we're just moving on in life. And we understand that what we did out there on the field for us to be able to go back to baseball heaven uh, and do that twice, not a lot of people get to do that. So uh, I know whether it's and me, myself, I don't have any remorse. But a lot of my guys, I know they're living life right now, enjoying it. And I miss a lot of them, bro. I would just, if I were to tell them something, say, I miss you, bro. I got a couple guys that are around here I'm probably gonna see after this, so. Uh, but yeah, man, that's, how, that's what I would say. I wanna say, you had a very, very great season. You batted 362, 58 for 50 games played, and also the third most hits in the history of Rollins College, 92. But you made an Instagram post, a last post saying, Adams, Adams Torres is out. I, Excuse me. No problem. What will you miss the most about Rollins Tars baseball? <sighs> Man, I mean, being around the boys. I think once you're done playing, uh, whether it's professional, college, whatever it is, man, what you miss most is being around the boys and and uh, you know having that camaraderie. You know, messing around in the clubhouse, playing that loud music. And I was I would always come in with my speaker. It's a small little Sony speaker, but I would be the first one to start playing music, trying to get the vibes going, man. I guess I would say miss that, man, but. Like I said, at the end of the day, we, we have a very good connection, all of us. Uh, I would, I'm going to miss being out there on that field, man. You know, hearing from the coaches, being able to be a part of a team and and uh, a lot of that stuff, man. You think about that stuff when you're done. Like when baseball was over for me that day, I was like, dang, like I didn't really cry on that field. Like I said before, I don't really believe in crying in baseball. They said in the sand line. I grew up watching that movie. It's my favorite baseball movie ever. But that day it was just kind of like the only, the only reason I cry is because I talked to the people that I was really thankful for, you know, for giving me that opportunity to play baseball. So. You know, I'll miss being able to be a little kid for nine innings, for two hours, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it, and being able to, to hit a ball as hard as I can and run around the bases and <clears throat> call my boys and say, yo, like, let's, let's, you know, we got to get it up. We got to start doing something. You know what I mean? So things like that, man. But other than that, <clears throat> life is going on. I'm ready to go forward with it. So. Yeah, I know life is going forward for you. And I want to say I really, really do want to thank you for yeah. coming here and doing this interview today. I know. The memories you're going to have with Rollins Tars is going to last with you forever. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Soon Lines Podcast. I had the El Capitan, Adam Torres, and I thank you for your time. Yes, sir, brother. Any freaking time, man. So can you yeah. sign? You got to get another autograph? Yeah, yeah brother. Autograph? Yeah, yeah, sir. Uh, you got to. Uh, I'll get it to y'all. No, yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. No but problem, man. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. And Soon Lines Podcast, we out. Sir, brother. I wasn't. I was.